Yeah, okay, so uh, that is the basic setup of the Arduino. Uh, it's uh, usually used to interface with the hardware, like buttons, electronics, sensors, these kind of things. Uh, so that is what basically uh, makes it different from a normal computer. Uh, also, it's a lot cheaper and uh, it's also smaller, so you can build it into things. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of different uh, microcontrollers out there. And Arduino is uh, the one that has gotten most popular in the maker community. Uh, so you can find a lot of tutorials on it and it's uh, used often by beginners. So it's easier to get into it because the tutorials are often aimed towards beginners. Uh, but if, if you at a later stage want to progress and do more advanced microcontroller and uh, basically physical computing or hardware, there are more uh, performant and better microcontrollers out there, which are equally easy to use. Um, but uh, we stick with Arduino for this uh, workshop because it's uh, common and it's easy and it's uh, very accessible. Uh, also, the Arduino itself comes in many versions and variants. You have like the Arduino Mega, which is bigger and have more outputs and inputs. You have uh, the uh, Arduino Uno, which is perhaps the most famous one. And on this picture we see the Arduino Leonardo which is, should also be the one you have in your kits. Um, so there are different versions. Yeah, like I said, it's a lot of inputs and outputs for interacting with sensor actuators, actuators and devices. So how do you actually write your program? You do it in uh, this kind of software. You can do it in other ways as well, but this is the, the kind of official way to do it. Uh, it's a program called Arduino IDE, Integrated Development Environment is what that stands for. And here you write your uh, code in one file and you upload it directly to your board. And I think actually I will quickly show you uh, that. So um, what you see here now is basically uh, I have started the Arduino software and I can write my code in here. Let me know if, it, if you can see it well, and, or if I have to raise the font size or something like this. Uh, but uh, this is the basic setup. Uh, if you've used other kinds of environments where you work with game loops, if you compare it, for example, with Unity, you might have heard of, uh, or other game engines, or basically, yeah, it's a common pattern that you have some kind of start sequence, which you do one time, and then you have a main loop, which I refer to as the game loop, but in this case it's just a loop. So this is the setup of all Arduino programs. So here you write the code that should run one time, uh, as it also say here, and in the loop you write code that should repeat over and over again. So in my case I would be perhaps be able to do this, to say that a pin should be enabled as an output pin. I and then I can in my code then also tell that pin to uh, get high or low. Yeah. I will do that. Yes, I will do it. That's a shame. Um, is this better? Can you see it kind of enough now? Yeah, I did. I will do it even more then. I will increase it. Perhaps even this much. It's better. God damn, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is just an example of a program. So basically this uh, program will uh, enable one of the pins, which are these small black holes 
the number 13 one and it will tell it to be an output basically where it can set the voltage between 0 volts and 5 volts. Uh, and then I will in my game loop over and over again I will just set it to 5 volts. So this is kind of a meaningless program but it uh, is uh, just uh, an example. So I could actually uh, then uh, add more stuff to for example uh, wait 100 milliseconds and I could write to the same pin, but I could write instead low. And then I could wait again, like 300 milliseconds. So uh, this program, what do, do you guys think it will do? Write in the chat if you have an idea what, what is, would be happen with this program. Seems to be no ideas <laughs> in the chat. Um, so what I actually, actually did now was uh, to upload the code to the Arduino. And uh, if you look uh, here, you will see that it's blinking. So it turns out that n pin number 13 uh, is not only one of these pins here. As you can see, they are numbered. So this is pin number 13, but besides having an output there, it's internally also connected to a small uh, light emitting diode, an LED, a lamp. So the code I just wrote will, wrote, uh, will basically turn on and off this LED uh, with a certain frequency or with a certain interval. So it will be on for 100 milliseconds and then turned off uh, for uh, 300 milliseconds. Okay, uh, let's go on. So today you will uh, work in this way and try to code uh, what your Arduino should do and uh, how it should uh, work. Um, uh, of course, uh, we will try to help you if you stumble upon any issues. Um, you also have in your kit you have breadboards. Uh, so breadboards is uh, uh, a really useful tool to quickly prototype circuits uh, where you don't need, want or you can't solder. So you can connect things through this uh, breadboard. I, I can compare it to kind of a patch bay or you know a TLF Excel uh, where you just input cables into this kind of a pattern and they will get connected. Um, so it's useful, uh, you, you can use it together with uh, uh, this type of cable. Uh, jumper wires uh, and these ones are, you can are able to put down into the different holes like this. Uh, and what you should know about uh, a breadboard is uh, how are the different parts or the different holes connected and here is a picture of that and as you see uh, the rows in the center they are connected like this so five together uh, are connected and uh, there's a small gap in the center and there it doesn't go any connection and then you have on the sides also which you can see also on the right picture here it follows along so the sides are usually uh, used to provide power if you have a lot of things that need power so you can just take one cable to one of those side rails and then you can provide power or ground to different parts of your circuit from that point oh sorry Yeah, I meant this picture, of course. Uh, I forgot to show you the picture. So here you can see how are the uh, breadboard actually laid out. But I should also show you uh, this breadboard I have here. It looks like this. But what I have done is to actually uh, taken away the backside. So uh, I ripped it off. And here you can see basically how the things are uh, connected uh, inside. So you can see there are these metal uh, plates which basically describes how things are connected. So if I take uh, a cable like this one, for example, here, I could insert it uh, here. And then I could insert another cable on the same row, perhaps here. 
and uh, this means that these two cables are connected so it basically it will go from this end through the thing here and up here so basically I would I would think of it as one connection through the patch bay or through the breadboard and this is basically how you connect things together so if, if I for example wanted to connect uh, a light emitting diode an LED like this one I could insert it like this and as you see both legs of the diode are connected in, uh, in uh, one row each so the right leg goes here and the left leg goes here all right so then I could actually take some cables like this and connect them further with other things Oh, and now you see I actually connected wrong, so I should move it one step to the left. So that is basically uh, how a breadboard works. Breadboard works, and uh, yeah, I, I've seen uh, it's common that people make the mistake and forget uh, that all of these are connected. So it's basically the same pin. Uh, so if you put an LED and you want each leg to be connected to different things you can obviously not put it like this. It's a very common mistake for beginners. Because what you see now is that both of these legs are connected to basically the same hole or the same row. And if you look on the back side, you see basically this will make a connection between the legs. And that is not how you would want to use an LED. So uh, something to watch out for. Okay. Uh, let's uh, continue. You also have uh, multimeters and they are very useful in, if you want to debug or check for errors in your circuits. So uh, you can use uh, multimeters to uh, measure different things. For example, we have, uh, you can measure voltage uh, across two points or between over the voltage over uh, a section of your circuit, for example. Uh, you can measure resistance uh, and you can measure uh, uh, current. Uh, one uh, nice thing that some uh, multimeters have is they also, also have a, a, like a, a path check or what you would call it. Uh, and I will show you on the one I have here. Here we have a uh, multimeter. I think some of you have a, a, a similar, similar model in your uh, kits and uh, you can choose what you want to measure. So it's off, I'm measuring voltage, uh, di direct connected, or direct current, or uh, alternating current, AC. Uh, so DC, AC, resistance, you see the ohm sign there. And here you have this thing, it's a diode, or if it's a yellow sign, you can press this one, and it will make a beeping sound. So basically I can use this one to check if a cable is working. So I will, for example, take this cable here and just put the two ends here. And I will hear the peep. Basically, the peep tells me, okay, uh, there is a continuous uh, connection here. It works. There isn't uh, uh, some error in the cable. So that is also a good advice. Uh, but also resistance can be useful. So, for example, I, I could have the same cable here and I could just try to connect it also in the same pattern and see the resistance over the cable. And as you see, it's kind of 0 0.2 ohms in resistance. So it's kind of no resistance at all, which is good because I want the cable to be very conductive and lead all, all the electricity through. All right. Um, so uh, you have received some kits uh, and it should be kind of, this should be the kind of content which is inside. And uh, I have tried to be sure that all of the stuff works, but it might, because it's a lot of kits, and it might be that something doesn't work or uh, some kind of part missing, I'm not sure. Uh, so uh, let us know, or let me know if something is wrong with your kits. And also, I think Mohammed have already told you, but it's of course only that you should borrow the kits uh, and return them in a good state. Uh, basically, you have a small bag within the bag with more s small components. Try to put them back as well. Um, 
Yeah, one, uh, one uh, thing I just remember now is to good to know. I mean, this is a resistor. Uh, I guess... Uh, so here we have different resistors which are included in the package. And it's really hard to know uh, this kind of marking. You have these lines with different colors on resistors which tell you uh, what kind of re uh, resistance uh, it is. And one way to find out the resistance of a resistor is to look up the marking and try to uh, basically understand what it means. Or much easier is to just take uh, the multimeter, multimeter and uh, tell it to measure resistance. And then I will, for simplicity, I will put this resistor here and I will just measure the resistance over the resistor. And I hold it and I see, okay, one mega ohm. Because you see there's a one dot and I see a small M on the side, which tells me uh, there that it's a mega ohm. So then I know it's a one mega ohm resistor. Then I don't have to try to interpret all these lines because that's time consuming and disturbing. So that's uh, one advice also for you. Mm -hmm. This one. So, uh, like I said earlier, we have off, we have uh, voltage, uh, we have uh, uh, okay, voltage DC or voltage AC, and we have ohm. And this is the sign for resistance. This is the electronic sign for resistance. So that's the one where you measure resistance. Sometimes it will say uh, ohm, O, H, M instead on some multimeters, but usually this is the sign. Uh, okay, good, good to clarify, thank you. Okay, um, so uh, what I've understood from uh, the setup and the planning is that some students don't have the possibility to use the kits because they are basically remotely situated, so they can't receive kits and then uh, they can't uh, use the actual hardware. So, of course, this is very unoptimal. Uh, because this workshop is a lot about being hands-on and trying out the, the hardware with your own hands and with your own uh, fingers. So there is, a <coughs> there is a backup plan for that and basically uh, you should use uh, Tinkercad circuits. Um, so it's very similar how you do uh, the things So you should uh, try to log in and find a way and here you can find your way into circuits and here you can create uh, basically uh, like a, a drawing canvas where you can put different things and objects. Um, so in this case, for example, I want uh, an Arduino and I can place this out here and I can draw cables like so. Uh, so this is how you should work during the day. Uh, so, it's eight minutes I have until we should start working. Um, let's talk a little bit about the setup or the workflow of this day. Um, the, the, the goal is that you, all the students, you go out into your breakout rooms and you basically use the lab PM, which should be handed out to you. It's uh, basically this one. So here you have different exercises and you should try to, in your own pace, <coughs> uh, complete and finish and uh, go through the exercises and try to also answer the questions uh, in there. Sometimes it says, yeah, okay, can you draw a schematic of the circuit you made? Yeah, then you should try that. Okay, how do I make a, a, a schematic? Well, okay, maybe I haven't tried that before, let's Google. How do you make a schematic? Or maybe you just try it. I mean, it's more about learning, learning, learning today and learning actually by just trying. Uh, and of course, uh, you can't know everything before, but that, that's no, no, don't worry about that today, just deep dive into it and try the best, of you, best you can. So try to follow along the exercises in your own pace and try to finish them. 
and you should work uh, together with one or two persons with your kids. And I guess you've already kind of split up with who is working with whom. Um, I will, uh, together with the TAs, uh, try to be accessible all the time and just trying to help you uh, with things that comes up and if you're struggling or if you have issues or questions. So basically the TAs will try to help me also see if uh, people need assistance. You can either write, I guess, in the Slack chat or talk to the TAs or try to talk to me, uh, but then I will jump down in breakout rooms and try to help you as you go along. Uh, also, I will try to have these small sessions throughout the day, uh, basically these ones here. I don't know if uh, you received this uh, schedule or not. Um, yeah, so it's not so good that it's so bad quality. I think the output from my screen is very good resolution, so I don't know why. Um, yeah, okay, let's maybe not have it that big. Something like this. So uh, I will try to, at these uh, occasions in time, I will go through parts. And the things I go through will basically be related to this exercise. So th the goal is for you to go ahead. You don't have to wait for these uh, uh, mini sessions that I ho hold. The main goal of this is to, if you had some problem uh, and you failed or there was some error for you in the exercise, you can jump in and take a look where I basically try to explain the exercise and some uh, important aspects of that exercise. Uh, or if you're just interested into this specific uh, domain or this subject, so if you haven't really yet understood what, for example, pull down and pull up resistor mean, means, uh, then you might be interested. Uh, and then you can try to tune in uh, and come out from your breakout room at 11.30. And I will try to have a small session where I describe this. this. I will try to keep all of these sessions uh, no longer than 20 minutes. They should be just, this is how it is, uh, some sh short explanation and then you can go back. Uh, but what, what I want to point out is that you don't need to take part of all of these ones. I will try also to record them so you can have them as a reference afterwards. Uh, but if you're working on and you think it goes well and you don't need, uh, need to know about, for example, active high or active low, uh, then feel free to not tune in. Uh, it's kind of an open voluntarily session. All right. Uh, next thing to discuss is uh, the exercise. Ah, oh, well, I will quickly also say I posted yesterday a different version of the lab PM, which is this one uh, for remote students using the simulator. So you should use this one instead. There are small uh, variations in the lab PM for the exercises. Some of the exercises is not possible to perform um, with the simulator. So I, I have tried to make some small adjustments. Um, and you should. Uh, yeah, follow this lab PM to the best of your efforts in the uh, simulator. Okay, and uh, the goal is that you try to finish uh, exercise one to nine today. Uh, and these exercises are more, uh, more focused on specific um, aspects of the electronics or the coding. Uh, and from uh, uh, from 10 to 13, uh, the exercises are more kind of free and it's more explorative. And uh, if you finish all of them today, that's cool. Uh, but if you f don't finish all of them, you have the possibility to continue tomorrow. And tomorrow, of course, I will do some mini sessions, uh, as you see here at these times. And they are also related to those exercises. Um, yeah, but these, ex these exercises are more, uh, they're not so uh, uh, well guided or they're more open. So it's more about trying to find your own solution to the, to the problem. Like for this one example, create a reaction game 
Okay, there are some instructions here how you could do it, but it's not exactly saying exactly how you should connect things. So it's about trying and making uh, use of the things you learned throughout earlier exercises. Okay, I think that is uh, all we need to go through now before we just go ahead and start working on the exercises. Do we have any specific questions? Oh, you mean uh, these ones? Yeah, I can. Uh, the first thing I could do right now as a start is to share it in the chat, of course. Uh, as a first step, that should be good. And then we go to the chat here in Zoom, and I will paste it. So this is. Uh, Cool, that's good. Um, are there any other questions? If, if not, uh, feel free to start working. Uh, yeah, this, this uh, place, the, the uh, not breakout room, I guess. Or is that the best way, or do you want me to have it in the breakout room, which is basically called the mini session breakout room? Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they are short. It will depend. Uh, it will depend on. Uh, what? So it will depend on uh, uh, which one it is, but it will kind of be 15 minutes, 20 minutes each. But, but should I have them in the main room or should I put them in the breakout room? In the main room, okay. Is it a random lurker? <laughs> so interested in Arduino, they just... Wait, uh, okay, I think uh, LOB, it's a uh, Juden uh, build group on Chalmers. Yeah, it's weird that they are here. I, I don't think it's a student. I think there is. Uh, uh, I think it's a student uh, association. I don't know. Yep. Thank you. I will be here if anybody needs assistance. Just uh, call out. <laughs> 